Üdvözlök mindenkit a hetek legújabb adásában, ezúttal Irán Szrulovic, az Igárd Vacs elnöke lesz a vendégünk, és arról fogunk beszélgetni, hogy a legújabb félnémében, a legújabb videójában az boncolgat, hogy ki is a nő, és nem sokkal azelőtt pedig az boncolgat, hogy ki is a férfi, és ma ez egy nagyon parás téma, úgyhogy ezt fogjuk körüljárni. Um, welcome, Milan, Thanks, thank you for joining us here in, in Hatek. And uh, I think before uh, getting to your videos, I would like to hear a little bit about you, because I know that you've been a Hollywood actor as well, and you, you also work in um, the watch business. And I just, I was wondering, uh, were you always, uh, you know, uh, standing up for the values you stand up nowadays? Or when you were in Hollywood, you had different mindset, different, um, I don't know, were you? Or uh, so did, did it change uh, at some point? Or uh, were you always it's, well, it's uh, not standing so for insight? Sorry, yeah, it's not so much that it changed. It's it's more that I got to a point where I felt I needed to start speaking up. So I always believed what I believe. Um, and I'm always open to my views changing. You know what I mean? I'm not like stuck in my beliefs, but what I but I've had con pretty consistent beliefs my whole life. Uh, and I noticed there was a trend not only in Hollywood, but across media, in the news, big tech, everything coming out, all the messages on one side of the equation. Uh, there was a decay of gender roles that I started noticing happening. This dates back to like the Gillette ad. That's the first time I spoke out because I felt like if we're going to destroy the concept of masculinity, we're going to destroy society. We need we need strong men in society. We need men who are proud to to be uh, proud of their what they are, who they are. And there's this one message: men are toxic. Men are toxic. Men are rapists. Men are villains. Men are criminals. Just over and over and over to the point of Gillette, which is a huge company that has historically supported men coming out and making a video accusing almost all men of being toxic. They're like, some men aren't like this, but some is not enough. Some implies a minority of men. The vast majority of men are not like that. So that was the first time. And uh, from there, I noticed there was more things that just kept happening in society that no one was willing to talk about. For example, the police. We had here really, really uh, intense riots And no one was willing to stand up for the police and just humanize them. You know, there can be problems, but you should humanize the police for, force. If you look at the statistics, they're not what people are claiming. So there's so much misinformation. And I'd even go so far as to say it's disinformation. It's intentionally misleading to try and create a narrative of fear among the very communities they're trying to help, they, the people that they claim they're trying to help. So this, this movement to defund the police and abolish the police. They claim they didn't want to abolish the police, led to a lot of police having to quit, being fired, defunded. And what did we see since then? We saw a massive increase in crime. We saw a massive increase in homicide. So it costs lives, these things that are pushed into society. So that's another. And then the last one was, what is a woman? Which is a obviously a video trying to bring attention to the fact that we live in a time where a Supreme Court justice in the United States cannot define what a woman is. We have men in the United States just two weeks ago in New Jersey, I believe, there were seven inmates assaulted by a male prisoner in a female prison because the male prisoner identifies as female. And that's happening often. It happened in the UK. 24 women were sexually assaulted in a, in a UK prison because they put a male rapist who identifies as female in the prison. Uh, it's happened numerous times in the United States. So it just gets to a point where common sense is completely off the table. No one's willing to talk about it. There's only one ideology pushed. And so I felt it necessary to start kind of putting out the opposite point of view to show that there is still common sense in the world. So that's pretty much what I've been doing since that first video. Okay. So that, that was the inspiration for you? For yeah, it dates all the way back. Each one kind of has a different starting point of why I do it. For example, the Gillette one was a response to the narrative toward men. This newest one is the narrative toward women. The, the messages towards women. The main consistent through line is all the messages on the other side are dehumanizing. So I'm always trying to put out humanizing messages. I see, I see. Well, you know, uh, since we posted uh, an article about your latest video, uh, what is a woman? There were so um, like overwhelmingly positive feedbacks, like uh, 
so many comments saying that I will only buy a guard watch from now on and stuff like that. <laughs> because uh, I, I think people really need it. Like uh, an average peop uh, average person, many times afraid to speak up because they think that their voice is not enough. They are not uh, like <laughs> big of a person enough to, to speak up and that their voice won't be heard because they, they're just one person. And, uh, you know, uh, they, 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 uh, many times they see that uh, the big corporations just uh, show one side of the story. Like they, they, they just show the LGBT side, the, the transgender side. And, uh, you know, when, when you watch ads, uh, you don't necessarily want to watch these as well, but you, you, you must watch them because they don't let you any, any choice in the matter. And, uh, and it's, it's very hard. As a, as a conservative, as a, you know, as a person who believes in natural genders um, and uh, values like this to, to, to be facing this all the time, you know, on YouTube, in the television. So I guess um, watching these videos, like, it, it's like a, a little bit of fresh air and, you know, um, <laughs> that's, that's why people like it. But um, I was, I was really wondering what kind of reactions did you get to the, to these videos in the US? So it's completely dependent on the video. The what is a woman video had the most positive, most like, you know, 90% positive. I, I think deep down people know that a lot of the stuff going on right now is unethical. And so they're, again, like you said, they're just scared to speak up. The police video had a polarizing response because there's such a, a polarizing position in the United States about that, but we still had a tremendous amount of support. Deep down, again, most people realize the value of police. These are things that the silent majority of the country believes in, but is scared to speak on. And the what is a man also, we got international uh, positive response from that. We get hate mail. We always get hate mail, but it doesn't really bother me. It doesn't, it doesn't overshadow all the positive. I'd rather be the type of person who has people who hate me, but I'm standing up for what I believe in. And then people who need to hear that message are hearing it than be the type of person who just sits at home quietly, hoping that the world changes. Absolutely. So yeah, whatever negative comes is not enough to deter me in any way, shape or form. And it doesn't overshadow the positive in any way, shape or form either. Yeah. And did it have an effect on your sales or? or yeah, we, you know? we, we saw an increase in sales for sure when the video was peaking. Um, obviously, with all things, it normalizes very uh, quickly. That's how uh, press works. But I definitely want to show other companies that you can put out messages like this and they can be profitable. It doesn't have to hurt your bottom line. You can put out messages supporting the things you believe in on this side of the equation. It doesn't all have to be here. And, uh, and you can have positive results from it from a sales point of view, for sure. Yeah, so, I mean, that was my first thought as well. Like... Uh... If, if you put out a video like this, maybe uh, people will boycott you and, you know, these, these social media platforms will, will cancel you. And uh, did any of it happen? I know that your video, like your latest video, What is a Woman, uh, that was, um, you know, uh, on, on Hungarian YouTube with a, with a Hungarian subtitle, it got uh, banned from YouTube, actually. Uh, I, I could only find the English version because, uh, like YouTube said, uh, it was hate speech. So they just deleted it from, <laughs> from the, the platform that uh, shared it uh, with the Hungarian subs. Uh, did it happen uh, with any other uh, videos of yours? All the videos get restricted at a minimum and we can't advertise them. They're considered uh, political advertising, election advertising. They all have something that comes out that kind of limits how we can advertise them, they get shadow banned. I didn't believe in shadow banning until it started happening to my videos, but it's real, I can promise you. I've seen it happen in real time on the metrics on my videos. The views actually go down, not up, which, and then I contacted YouTube one time. I said, how are the views going down? They go, oh, those weren't real views, so we removed them. I'm like, okay. And then no one can find it in their search. No one can find it anywhere. And, um, and then it's restricted. You have to have a YouTube account to sign to watch it and then if, if i want to advertise it i'm not allowed so they just do everything they can to limit the exposure of the video which is almost worse than banning it because if it's banned then it's clear cut they're censoring you if they just shadow ban it don't allow you to advertise it they, they can be like oh no we didn't do anything it's just that it's not able to get out there it's it's on you um and so it's 
it's very uh, it's very odd that they do that, considering some of the other content that they have no problem with. Um, but obviously, there's a bias there. But again, I think even that's starting to change because you see guys like Elon Musk now buying Twitter. What's that going to do? <laughs> the whole world's having a meltdown on the left. Do you think it will start a chain reaction for the better? <laughs> I hope so. I think that it's necessary. Again, it's like he has the ability to have major cultural impact. He's the exact kind of person you want doing exactly what he's doing. Uh, and the fact that so many people on the left are so scared They're not scared of the fact that he might censor. They're scared of the fact that he won't censor. That's what scares them. And that's such an interesting point of view. No one's coming out. There's maybe one person who came out and said the most ridiculous thing I remember seeing on the news. I don't remember it on what channel. And he's like, what if they censor someone before an election or hide a story that could hurt uh, someone who's running for office? And I'm like, well, that's exactly what they did with the Hunter Biden laptop. They hid the entire Hunter Biden laptop story. They said it's Russian disinformation, which today is proven completely false. It's a 100% true story. They did that right before the election. They shut down and banned one of the biggest news, uh, uh, news companies in the United States. And then they banned uh, Donald Trump off of Twitter. They uh, banned uh, Babylon B. They banned anyone who disagreed with them. And you're like, okay, come on. You're worried about censorship now, today, when it's Elon Musk. What they're really worried about is that they don't have control over the narrative. That's all they care about. They don't care about freedom of speech, and they don't care about censorship. They care about controlling the narrative. Because right now, they control every institution. They control education. I'll tell you a story that's very sad. This is one of the big things that really got me upset about the uh, What is a Woman video that motivated me to make it. My niece and nephews range between the age of eight to 15, okay? I remember as young, now my the youngest one, Luke, came home and he's being taught in school all about this stuff, transgenderism, all this stuff, to the point where they brought in a guy to teach them who has two identities. One of them is like Mr. Muff Muff or something like that. He's a transgender person with two identities and he's also gay and he's also this and he's also that and like major intersection. The guy not to be rude, is not in a healthy state of mind to be teaching kids from six to eight. You know what I mean? Go let them teach adults. That's fine. But six to eight about these things. It's not healthy. That's up to the families and the parents, which is what DeSantis did here in Florida. He passed a bill. All of a sudden, all that bill said was people who are eight years old and under should not be indoctrinated by teachers. What parent is not okay with that? What they're telling you is that you at home do not have the authority to teach your young baby child what he should believe we the government we the education system all of us know what's best for your kids and that's really what they believe they believe that they know what's best their future world is the best world and they will impose it they will control everything to get to that end point so the fact that people oppose a bill that says eight-year-olds and under shouldn't be taught these things in school never even mentioned the word gay by the way there's no mention of the word and that there was this massive response in the united states against it it's ridiculous But that's, the, that's their response to everything. If you make uh, something saying you shouldn't teach an eight-year-old or a seven-year-old about sexual, about transgenderism, then they claim, oh, you're trying to kill all transgender people. You're trying to get transgender people to commit suicide. They just take whatever position you took and they make it the most extreme thing in the world. And, then, and, they're, and the language they use around it is very effective also, right? Like, because they're, they basically always say you're trying to deny human rights. And I'm like, what about the human rights of the women being raped in prison right now because you're putting men in prison with women? What about their human rights? Nobody wants to talk about them because they don't actually care about human rights. They care about an ideology. When someone is, is driven by an ideological standpoint to the point where they're willing to ignore empathy, ethics, logic, common sense, they're willing to change their... Even with the, the, the movement with the what is a movement, what is a woman thing, people are ignoring basic biological fact they can ignore basic biological fact if you can get people to ignore that basic binary that a man is a man and a woman is a woman you can get them to believe anything but how can people live uh in a world where everything is fluid like isn't it i don't know i i i it, it is very hard for me to imagine uh not to have like uh eternal truths and this eternal values Yeah. But everything yeah. is constantly changing. And how, how can you follow that? 
so essentially what you were talking about absolute truths universal truths every society human beings are uh were designed to worship something that's just how we're built if you're not going to worship god people worship drugs they worship alcohol they worship their phone sitting on their phone all day there every human being has the thing they worship right and so you're either going to worship something that's coming from man or you're going to worship something that's coming from some kind of absolute truth. Those are the only two directions you can go in because human nature will make you inevitably worship something. And uh, it's interesting to see that when you go this direction, the direction of man, number one, whatever man builds will be influenced by bias. It's human. It's the same thing that's driven every atrocity in the world to date. Uh, and so it's it's also what created identity politics. If you look at identity politics, identity politics is heavily driven by the need to worship groups made by man, hierarchies, because we don't have some kind of absolute truth to believe in. So you have no value, right? So if I'm born, there's no absolute truth. There's just the material world. I'm nihilistic. I need to create value for myself. How am I going to do it? Well, I as an individual am not unique and special. Because it's not like I was created by God. It's not like I was created by anything universal. I just exist by, by randomness. So it's actually the opposite. You're not special at all. You're just completely random and you just exist. So if you see yourself that way, that's a very depressing way to see yourself. How can you love yourself if you're just some random thing that's completely materialistic? When you die, you're gone. You have no actual inherent value. Nothing by nature has inherent value, right? Because if I can't feel that way about myself, how can I feel that way about others? And so what you seek out is groups. You seek out groups that you become loyal to, tribal with, because then you have some kind of sense of value. Now I have a group identity. Now I matter. And then you'll fight for the, the ideology of that group, even if it makes no sense. Even if it's telling you, go kill that other group. Because it's the only thing you actually have that gives you value. Right? So, whereas if you do believe in, in absolute truths, you do believe that you are designed, you do believe that you are born with value, then you start off in the position of, I am important, I do have value, and then you can love yourself. And when by nature you can love yourself and see yourself as something truly unique, then you have to look at other people and see them that way. You don't need a group because everyone, it's actually the opposite. Groups actually become unappealing because every individual is special, every individual has value. And then you just, you can be in awe of every person. And so that's, that's the actual path of absolute truth, in my opinion. You is that, do you plan on doing some new projects, like some new videos or like this, this was uh, uh, the video for now. And, and whenever a new uh, topic will come up, then maybe you will consider doing a reaction video or something. Not every single one is, is controversial that I put out, but I do want, I'm, we do have videos and like messages planned that just kind of bring light to the connections between a father and a son and masculinity, a father and a daughter, trying to re-strengthen these bonds in America. I don't know how it is in the rest of the world, but the rate of homes that don't have fathers uh, went up in the 60s. If you look at in, in any community, five times higher of fatherless homes. So it was 5% in the white community, went up to 25, now maybe 30% fatherless homes. In the black community, it went from 25% fatherless homes to up to 75% fatherless homes. Uh, and there's a massive impact on society because of that. It's one of the biggest problems in society, in my opinion, is that fathers, number one, they don't see themselves as valuable. So they just have a kid and they leave. And number two is that we as society don't treat them as valuable. So they have no reason to feel valuable. So a lot of the cultural messages I'm trying to put out are trying to bring that idea back. The, the nuclear family, two-parent households, it's very important. And so I'm always putting out messages in that regard. As for everything else, I mean, I would love to put one. I, there was something that just happened in California that's really ridiculous, where it's not even late-term abortion anymore. They're trying to pass, or they did pass, some kind of bill. I have to research it more before I put out a video. I like to make sure I'm 100% accurate on this yeah where even there's no liability for the mother even a week after the child's born. If she neglects it, if she's, yeah, so it's still not apparently a full human, which is not surprising. Again, with their ideology, they, they've pushed the notion 10 years ago, if I would have asked somebody, do you believe in late-term abortion? They would have said, no, of course, it's, it, that's totally wrong. It's a baby. And, you know, unless the mother's life is on the line, I don't believe in it at all. And yet today, if you ask people, 
they they go, oh, I don't care. Right up until the moment of birth, I don't care. It's changed so much. It's become a mainstream opinion. They're able to mainstream extreme opinions. It's always these new normals. So why is it so so hard to believe that in five years from now, you know, up until one years old, let's be okay with killing the baby. <laughs> it's a burden to society. You know what I mean? Like, why not? It doesn't actually contradict anything else that they've said so far. So I'm like, all right, it's not so far-fetched. So that's something I'd really like to speak on. I think that's another one. You talk about one of the biggest tragedies of our time. That's one of them.